Hi, my name is Chloe LeBlanc, and today I'm presenting on quantum emitters in 2D materials. I hope you'll find this topic interesting and that you'll be willing to watch this video until the end. Photonics is a field that aims to harness the high propagating speed and noise resilience properties of photons and is destined to have a central role in future quantum technologies. Today, lasers and LEDs are examples of, of the many photonic technologies that are increasingly pre prevalent in our daily lives. These have quickly become high performing, low cost and reliable, driving the internet, lighting up casino signs, Christmas trees, you name it. A new frontier of photonic research has been the development of non-classical light sources, sources that produce streams of photons with controllable quantum correlations. For instance, the single photon emitter, which I'll be referring to as SPE. Its purpose is to generate exactly one photon on demand into a given spatial temporal mode. The basic idea is very simple. A single quantum emitter, such as a quantum dot, an atom, a molecule, a diamond's nitrogen basic vacancy, or a semiconductor's impurity, is excited with a pulse source, after which a single photon with the desired properties is isolated at the output. For example, say an optical or electrical port pulse generates carriers, electrons and holes, inside a given quantum dot. These carriers occupy only discrete energy levels, and when they recombine, they produce several photons of different frequencies. Spectral filtering can then be used to isolate a single one and send it to the output. SPEs play a central role in a range of quantum technologies already, including cryptography, secure communication, information, and sensing. The first demonstration of an SPE dates back to 1977. The study found a sodium atom unable to radiate immediately after having emitted a photon and made a quantum jump to a lower state. It produced one and only one photon at a time. Solid state single photon emission has been achieved on multiple platforms, such as these shown here. 3D crystals, TMDCs, which I'll be talking about later, HBN, which I'll also be talking about later, and excitons. None of these single-handedly satisfies all prerequisites for an ideal SPE, which include brightness, or the rate of photons extracted from the system, single photon purity, which quantifies the one-at-a-time behavior and non-classical nature of the SPE, indistinguishability, or how well defined the spatial temporal mode of two photons emitted from the same or different emitters is, and stability and reproducibility, which set a practical limit in terms of yield, scalability, and reliability. Self-assembled indium arsenide quantum dots are considered state-of-the-art in terms of purity and indistinguishability. Yet spatial and spectral inhomogeneity has prevented the development of large-scale arrays of identical emitters. On the other hand, defect-based emitters in wideband gap materials in this line offer a more direct route towards site-controlled placement, but they tend to have low extraction efficiencies. Today, I'll be addressing SPEs in 2D materials. Recently, a number of 2D materials, substances that are a few nanometers or less in thickness, have been shown to host SPEs, in particular transition metal dichalcogenized, TMDCs, and hexagonal boron nitride, HBN, are the favored 2D materials. The brightness and purities measured in those are comparable to that in indium arsenide quantum dots and diamond and V centers. Also similar to quantum dots, the TMDCs only exhibit quantum emission at chirogenic temperatures. HBN, though, allows SP operation at, low, at room temperature. So why particularly care about emitters in 2D materials? 
2D materials exhibit strong in-plane bonding and are self-passivated, which means that their surfaces are free of dangling bond. Consequently, 2D materials can easily be integrated with high precision in photonic devices. 2D materials were first reported in 2004 when Dr. Andre Geim, or Geim exfoliated a flake of graphite with scotch tape and repeated this task about a gazillion times to end up with ultra-thin flakes of just a few atomic layers in thickness. These had a huge conductivity and were named graphene. The thickness of a monolayer is in the same order as the electron mean free path in that layer, which means that you can obtain quantum confinement. As a result, 2D materials exhibit quantum properties that are generally absent in their bulk counterparts. This includes the ability to host quantum emitters and spin defects. Examples of quantum emitters in 2D WSE2, or tungsten diselenide, are shown as bright localized spots in this map of PL intensity. Emitters in atomically thin materials can be more easily accessed. Given that the SPEs are embedded in a monolayer, total internal reflection can also be avoided, and the light extraction efficiency can be very high. The origins of SPEs in TMDCs are still under investigation. The emission is detuned by several milli-electron volts from the exciton transition and tends to appear at the edges or in proximity to wrinkles on the flakes. In 2015, it was actually proved that this is because SPEs have a high tendency to appear in strained regions. It was further confirmed in 2017 by stamping TMDs onto a bumpy surface as shown on the nanopillar array here to the right, which created strain at specific locations and achieved site-specific emitters, as you can see on the PL map right underneath. One current hypothesis is then that quantum emission originates from radiative recombination of the monolayer dark exciton ground state through an intermediate localized state in these regions of high strain. These localized states themselves have been attributed to crystallographic defects. As an example avenue of research, electrically excited SPEs have been demonstrated in various vertical and lateral von der Waals header structures. These are structures and devices made from stacked 0D 1D or 2D crystals. There's a bunch shown here. In vertical devices, few layer thick crystals in the structure act as a current tunnel as current tunneling barriers between electrodes for use, for example, in field effect tunneling transistors, FETs. In these or TFETs. In these, the tunnel current is affected by changes in the electrode's Fermi energy, which can be controlled with an applied gate voltage. An increase in the Fermi energy effectively lowers the tunnel barrier, allowing for current to flow through. Von der Waals tunneling devices exhibit an on-off switching ratio of over 10 to the 6 at room temperature. Such structures provide an excellent pathway for scalable on-chip quantum technologies, although they generally lack single atomic defect level spatial precision. Other schemes have been suggested, for example, local electron injection through a gold-coated plasmonic tip. These could even provide insight into the nature and characteristics of the emitters through local electrical perturbations. Now that we've covered the advantages of 2D SPEs, let's take a look at an instance of a roadblock. 
HBN has a large band gap of around 6 electron volts that hosts a broad energy range of deep level defects or deep defect levels. This spectral heterogeneity represents a major challenge to their integration with electronic and photonic devices. But rigorous modeling of photon Emis emission wavelengths along with resonant excitation could be carried out to reveal the electronic and crystallographic structure of the emitters. This is a solution under investigation. In conclusion, 2D SPE metrics such as brightness, purity, and indistinguishability have improved by orders of magnitude since their discovery. They could even be imagined in future commercial photonic technologies. For that to happen though, special focus should be directed to designs that leverage the unique advantages of 2D materials, like von der Waals heterostructures that I mentioned previously. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.